welcome to the show. Sorry, sorry, I know you hate my singing. Sorry, everybody. But how are you all? Are you doing well? Are you being good? Yeah? Being nice to the adults in your house? Well, make sure those adults follow us on all our social media to keep up with all the latest Tiger and Tim action. So, how are you, Tiger? Oh, you've been enjoying the summer sunshine here in the UK? Very nice indeed. Have you been wearing your sunglasses? Sun cream? Good. A clean towel? Excellent. And what else? Ah! You must wear your swimming shorts, Tiger. No one wants to see a naked tiger. Ah! Good boy. You look fantastic. You look ready to go on the beach. But unfortunately, Tiger, today we're not going outside. We're going inside for today's theme, which is food, glorious food. I love food, Tiger. Now kids, of course we all probably like pizza, maybe some chips, chocolate and sweets, but you must have a healthy diet, a balanced diet of lots of different food types. Right, Tiger? Exactly, yeah, just like we do. We have vegetables, you know, fish, meat, lots of healthy stuff like fruit as well. You need to eat all of these things, kids, to live a healthy lifestyle. And remember, lots of water too. And since today's theme is about food, glorious food, I think it's time we went to visit the art critique, who I still haven't met somehow, some way. I don't know why I keep missing him. Let's see the art critique in his art gallery. And I wonder if he is eating any food, glorious food, kids. I hope it's something healthy, Mr. Art Critique. Boys and girls, it's me, the art critique in my art gallery, eating a wonderful apple. Oh, oh I'm choking on my apple. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, Tiger. Oh, uh, how's Tim? I miss him. Oh, my eyebrows <laughs> fall off again. Look at that, children. Can you believe it? And as you know, my job is to critique wonderful pieces of art. I have my monocle here to make sure that I can really see them all beautifully because I want you tiger cubs to send in all your art, your drawings, your paintings, your arts and crafts, which you're very good at, Tiger, aren't you? Yes, when we're not filming this section of the show, Tiger and I produce wonderful pieces of art together. Oh, my <laughs> eyebrows fall off again. Anyway, the last episode, I asked you to send in some art related to the jungle. So, let's have a look at the jungle submissions then. Well, the first submission is from a little boy called Bochi, who is only aged four, and he is in Bucharest, which is the capital of Romania. I love your jungle drawing, Bochi. Plenty of color there, and I'm sure as you get older, you're going to be a fantastic artist. And this is your brother, Daniel, isn't it? He is also in Bucharest, in Romania. You two are the first people from Romania we've had on Tiger and Tim. And Daniel, you too have a lockdown haircut done by your mummy, I'm told. Very nice. And a very nice piece of art, too. Look at the tiger on there. I can see it. Rawr, the tiger, the tiger. Fantastic, Daniel, age nine. And the third lockdown haircut I can see is David's. David, you are the third brother and the third boy from Romania, and you are age seven, and I can see a wonderful sun, some beautiful trees, and some gorgeous animals. I don't see the art critique in this drawing, though, David. Please include me next time. Fantastic work, and you three brothers have real talent. Keep up the art. And before we go, let's have a look at Darius 
and Risa, age 10 and 8. And as you may know, children at home, Tiger Cubs, they are brother and sister and they are near to London in the United Kingdom. They are our first Tiger Cubs to appear twice on the show because their art is so wonderful. Darius, your giraffe and elephant are spectacular, as are your lion. And Risa, your tiger and monkey and trees are something beautiful. It should be in an art gallery, this piece. Well done, both of you. Well, wasn't that great, Tiger Cub? What did you think, Tiger? Mm, yes, you thought it was better than your art? Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. You do have paws and not hands, after all. For the next episode, I'd like you, Tiger Cubs, to send in anything you like. Use your imagination. It could be a picture, a painting, a drawing of me, the art critique. It could be a picture, a painting, arts and crafts, of anything. Use your imagination, the power of the mind, and come up with something beautiful and send it to us. And parents, adults, please upload a landscape format of the art to tigerandtim.com forward slash upload and your tiger cubs will appear in a future show. How fantastic. Now, it's time for me to disappear. No. And I know that it's story time next, Tiger, your favorite. Enjoy the story and I'll see you all soon. I wish I could meet Tim one day. Bye-bye. <laughs> Well, isn't the art critique wonderful, kids? Tiger, you love him? Me too. But as the art critique said, it's our favorite part of the show, or definitely one of our favorites now, story time. And as he also said, our story is about food. It's called Tiger and Tim Become Master Chefs. That's me cooking. I'm not a master chef though. Are you a master chef, Tiger? No. But the most important thing, kids, listen, relax, stay calm and cool, and try to read along with us as well as listening. I'm starving, moaned Tiger. Well, that definitely sounds about right. Can you make me some breakfast? It's a hungry job being the world's most famous tiger. That's definitely true, isn't it? Tiger's tummy began to rumble loudly. The terrible sound made Tim spring out of his bed like a hopping rabbit. Hop, hop. You should really learn to cook, Tiger. I need to have at least one day of rest each week, groaned Tim. As much as Tiger really enjoyed Tim cooking him breakfast, he also knew he should really learn to cook his own food. And with that, Tiger began to dream. Maybe. If he learned to cook well, he could become the world's first master cub chef. Very good, Tiger. Seconds later, a golden light bulb moment shot through Tiger's mind. I'm going to text all of my jungle friends to let them know about my plans to become the greatest tiger chef. And with that, Laura the leopard, Ellie the elephant, and Mason the monkey magically appeared, dressed in safari print aprons and with matching chef hats. Fantastic, they looked like the cooks in the kitchen, didn't they? A hum, a hum, Laura Leopard roared as she cleared her throat. My jungle friends, we are united today as Tiger's sous chefs. Sous chefs means assistant chefs. We are here to make the finest ham and cheese omelette the world has ever seen. That sounds yummy, Tiger, doesn't it? Mm -mm -mm, in my tummy. Eggs? Yes, said Laura Leopard. It was then that the eggs began to talk. So, Tiger, you think you can take on this eggy challenge? Your first step, then, is to crack me and put me into a bowl. Tiger stared around amazed, but Laura the leopard was still reading the recipe. Had she not heard the egg speak? Tiger did as he was told. He cracked the egg perfectly. 
which allowed the egg to slop into the bowl beautifully. Whisk, yes, squealed Mason the monkey. Tiger waited to see if the whisk could talk too. He waited and waited and then out of nowhere, he heard the whisk shout, whisk, whisk as fast as you can. We need to get the egg beaten. Tiger whisked his egg so fast there was smoke coming from his paw. You were on fire. You were going so fast, Tiger, unbelievable. Knife, yes, rumbled Ellie the elephant. The knife then groaned, Tiger, although I'm not very sharp, you need to chop the ham into pieces, but make sure Laura the leopard watches whilst you do this, as using knives without adult supervision can be very dangerous. That is very true, Tiger. You should always be with an adult in the kitchen because there's lots of things in the kitchen that are very sharp and very dangerous, Tiger Cups. Tiger cautiously began chopping, and as he was just about finished, the cheese bellowed, my turn, my turn, grate me, Tiger, so I can melt onto the top of your omelet. And do not forget, always use the grater with an older person watching out for your safety. The grater was very, very clever. Suddenly, the loudest screech Tiger had ever heard filled the kitchen with noise. I'm ready, squealed the frying pan. Now, Tiger, you need to pour the whisked eggs into me. Once the eggs have begun to cook, you can sprinkle the ham and cheese all over the eggs. Okay, replied Tiger, here I go. Tiger did as he was instructed and success. Once the cheese has begun to melt, Tiger, you must get the spatula and fold the now fluffy omelette in half. Leave to cook and hooray, your omelette will be ready, said the frying pan. Tiger removed the omelette from the pan. His mouth was watering like a waterfall. And I can tell you that happens a lot in our house. He's always hungry. And using his knife and fork, Tiger took the biggest bite you have ever seen. He nearly finished the omelet in one gulp. That's impressive, Tiger. Delicious, sighed Tiger. The best chef in the world couldn't have cooked something as amazing as this. Tiger had become the stupendously spectacular, sensational chef he had dreamt of. And of course, he's also dashingly handsome. Who wrote this story? It must have been you, Tiger, my goodness. Suddenly though, the room began to spin and Tiger woke with some recognizable grumbling pains in his stomach. Oh no, it was just a dream. And his tummy was still hungry. But this time, he knew exactly what he wanted for breakfast that morning. It was a nice big ham and cheese omelette. What a great story. I loved it, Tiger. I hope you Tiger Cubs loved it too. And I hope that you read along with us throughout the story. And also, perhaps you can read this story to your families later when you watch the episode again. Story time with Tiger and Tim is over. On to the next section. Well, what a great story that was, Tiger. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, me too. And you, Tiger Cubs, I hope you did. But Tiger, seeing as you cook so well in that story, I'm fully expecting you to be cooking for me that well in our house. Oh, what's that ringing sound, everybody? It must be my phone. I've got to answer this, sorry. Hello? Oh, it's my mummy, Mummy Susie. Hello, Mummy Susie. Yes? Okay. Mummy Susie's not happy, Tiger. <laughs> She's telling me off again, kids. She says it was a lovely story in story time, but there were no fruit or vegetables in the story, and there were no vegetables in our ham and cheese omelet. She's right, you know, Tiger and Tiger Cubs. We need to eat our fruit and vegetables. I'm sorry, Mummy Susie. Please forgive me. I promise 
For my dinner, I'm going to have fruit for dessert and vegetables in my main course, I promise. <laughs> okay, well, I've got to go. I'm filming now. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, you'll have to stop talking now. I've eaten the phone. Right, riddle number one. Let's do it. This is something yellow, but it is not a light. It is a citrus fruit that's also a flavor in a fizzy drink or a soda, as you guys in America say. Hey, America. Tiger. Yes, absolutely right. It is a lemon. You know a lemon, everybody. Oh, I love lemon. Riddle number two, are you ready? I'm a yellow fruit that you might eat at lunch. When there's a group of me, we are known as a bunch. What do you think it is, Tiger Cubs? Have a think. Tiger? Of course, it is a banana. A very healthy fruit. I do like bananas. Okay, enough riddles, time for some jokes. What did the pecan nut say to the walnut? Anybody? What did the pecan nut say to the walnut? The answer is, we're friends because we're nuts. <laughs> but not nuts that you eat, as in a little bit silly nuts, if you know what we mean, kids. Mm -hmm. Joke number two. What? Do you call a cheese that isn't yours? Anybody? Tiger? You know it. You got it, kiddo. Nacho cheese! <laughs> Make sure you tell your friends at school or in the park, in the playground, anywhere you like. Nacho cheese. Okay, so that's the riddles and the jokes done. Now time for a Tiger's Tongue Twister! Try to repeat after me. I'll do it slowly and then get faster and see if I can do it without making a mistake, which is very difficult. <clears throat> How many cookies could a good cook cook if a good cook could cook cookies? A good cook could cook as much cookies as a good cook who could cook cookies. <laughs> My head is spinning, Tiger. I feel so dizzy. Oh, I can see birds and stars. Oh, my head. This is going to help your English speaking and your pronunciation. Take two, the final take. You can do it, kids. How many cookies could a good cook cook if a good cook could cook cookies? A good cook could cook as much cookies as a good cook who could cook cookies. Yes, I did it, Tiger! I'm the champion! I hope you kids did it at home, but don't worry if you didn't. Watch the episode again and practice your pronunciation with Tiger's Tongue Twisters. That's the joke shop over. It's now time for our final section. The Tiger and Tim Fan Cub. Let's do it, kids. Tiger and I are feeling a little hungry now, aren't we? Yeah. After all this talk of food, glorious food during the episode, so this is the final section, unfortunately. But as you know, this is the Tiger and Tim Fan Cub section. And so anyone watching this is a member of the Tiger and Tim Fan Cub, aren't they? Yes, indeed, they are. But being a member is quite important because any of our members need to be respectful to others, including to your families and your parents and your teachers, working hard in school, being kind to others, and always trying to read as often as you can. And of course, eating healthily, which is the theme of today. Food, glorious food. And is there anything else? Aha, yes, Tiger, you're right. Our new goodbye song. We wrote it together recently and we're going to sing it for you today. Are you ready? Uh, uh, hum. Okay. Three, two, one. Work hard at school. We'll think you're cool. Learning is rather fun. We both like heat, ah, veggies and treats. But books are our favourite things. Remember to draw, not with tiger's paw, and be kind to the people you meet. 
Oh, we go together like strawberries and cream With Tiger and Tim You'll dare to dream Keep reading, kids, and watch the next episode. It's time travel. 